Oh, well, uh, kind of on the uh, the tail of last week's conversation where we ended off talking a little bit about Katie Taylor there, uh, you know, that, that kind of got the wheels spinning in my head and I started, uh, started doing a bit of research. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Elizabeth Wilkinson today. Uh, and I want to mention uh, three of her fights. Elizabeth Wilkinson, uh, she was born in, uh, in England, in London. Uh, not a whole lot is known about uh, her life. Um, you know, other than that, she was born in London because she was self-proclaimed as of the famous city of London. Um, and she appeared to come from like working class English background, which was pretty typical of boxers at the time. Now, she was active between 1722 and about 1728. So we're going way, way back today uh, and talking about uh, very early on uh, female boxer. Uh, so it's un clear though because not a lot was known about her whether Wilkinson was actually her legal name or her birth name uh, so there's some speculation whether or not she was either married to or related to a Robert Wilkinson who was himself a prize fighter at the time as well as a thief and uh, a murderer who was executed about three months after her first bout um, so it has been speculated that maybe she took on Wilkinson as a stage name just to uh, kind of have that notoriety uh, with the famous criminal uh, but that being said, uh, the first of her three fights that I want to talk about tonight, and I'll put you out of your misery right now. She won, she won all three of these bouts. Uh, it's not really the, uh, the result we're interested in here, uh, but they were significant for, uh, for a different reason each. Um, so in 1722, uh, Wilkinson challenged Hannah Hayfield of Newgate Market to what, uh, what's many believe to be the first pri female prize fight in English history or in London history, at, at least, um, so this is, these were all advertised in the papers and, you know, the challenge would go out in the papers and then it would be returned in the papers prior to these fights. So we have some, uh, we actually do have some quotes from the time. Uh, so in 1722, uh, Wilkinson challenges Hayfield and the advertisement read, I, Elizabeth Wilkinson of Clerkenwell, having had some words with Hannah Hayfield and requiring satisfaction, do invite her to meet me on the stage and box me for three guineas. <laughs> Now, using our super accurate uh, talk and fight maths, that would uh, that equates to about eight hundred dollars in today's money. Oh, okay, wow. so Hayfield responded in the paper in kind. You know, I Hannah Hayfield of Newgate Market, hearing the resoluteness of Elizabeth Wilkinson, will not fail, God willing, to give her more blows than words, desiring home blows and from her no favor. Okay, so they went on to specify the rules in this fight. I remember we're talking bare knuckle. This is the 1700s here was that each woman would be, would hold a half crown, which was a coin of the time in each hand. And the one who dropped a coin would lose the fight. Now this, this was a, to determine the winner of this fight and B uh, it was a rule put in place uh, to guard against eye gouging and scratching, which was fairly common at the time in, in boxing in the 18th century. So if you held onto your money, you had to have closed fists. So that made that made a lot of sense. So that being that fight again significant because it uh, it's believed to be the first documented female prize fight in London. Okay, uh, the next one I want to talk about uh, was uh, going a few years forward in her career in seven, October of seventeen twenty six. Uh, a fight was announced between Wilkinson and uh, an Irish woman by the name of Mary Welsh to take place at James Stokes Amphitheater. Now, about halfway through Wilkinson's career, her name did change from Wilkinson to Stokes uh, when she married James Stokes. Uh, the, he was also a fighter himself and promoter, owned the amphitheater, and later in their career, they would actually usually get challenged as a couple, husband and wife against husband and wife, not in the ring at the same time, but you get the idea. Yeah. Uh, so that's the James Stokes Amphitheater, and, and this is why this one's important. Uh, a note at the bottom of the, uh, the advert for the fight read, uh, that they will fight in cloth jackets, short petticoats coming just below the knee, Holland drawers, white stockings, and pumps. So th the reason it's important to talk at all about what they'll be wearing when they're fighting is because just because prize fighting was a fairly new phenomenon for, for females at the time didn't mean that there weren't female fights happening around the boxing world at the time. Uh, it was more common. Uh, it would be more like a sideshow attraction, and they would frequently hire prostitutes to fight topless before the fights, uh, kind of as a uh, you know, sideshow trying to ramp up the, uh, amp up the crowd kind of thing. Um, so the fact that they're, they're saying that these women were going to be fighting fully clothed 
uh, sets both Wilkinson and her opponents, for that matter, apart as serious athletes as opposed to a, a, a sideshow attraction. You know, that's saying to anyone in the papers read about this fight, come on down if you want to see some boxing today, because that's all these girls are here to do. So it's, you know, it's a good documented case of, you know, them kind of taking a step in the right direction of getting proper recognition as athletes. Um, now, on a slightly lighter note, I want to talk about another career, another one a little later on in her career, in about 1728, coming down to the end of uh, her, her professional boxing career here. Um, she uh, responded to the challenge of one Anne Field. Now you'll have to bear, you'll have to hang with me for a moment here on on uh, on the her profession here. Anne Field, an ass driver from Stoke Newington. An ass driver, uh, a, a donkey herder. Okay, but the yeah. <laughs> but the but the uh, the wording is important because it does come up in, in the uh, in the challenge. So that's why I wanted to throw it in there. Uh, just, um, you know, just making sure that I heard that correctly. No, you you definitely heard that right. <laughs> so right. the historians uh, often cite this challenge because of uh, you know. Anne's humorous job, as mentioned, uh, and because of uh, Elizabeth's assur uh, assuredness in her response. Um, so I'll, I'll give you the uh, the, the, uh, the challenge in response here. Uh, just and this this version I wanted to talk about this fight is just really to show that trash talk was alive and well in the 1720s. Uh, so the challenge went out. I Anne Field of Stoke Newington, ass driver, well known for my. Well known for my abilities in boxing in my own defense, wherever it happened. In my way, having been affronted by Mrs. Stokes, Wilkinson, um, styled the European championness, championess, uh, do fairly invite her to a trial of her best skill in boxing for 10 pounds. Fair rise, fall in question, but not to give her such proof uh, of my judgment that shall oblige her to acknowledge me the championess of the stage to the entire satisfaction of all of my friends. Very wordy, very 1700s. Uh, so the response from Elizabeth. I, Elizabeth Stokes of the city of London, having not fought in this way since I fought the famous boxing woman of Billingsgate 29 minutes and gained complete victory, but as the famous Stoass woman d dares to fight me for 10 pounds, I do assure her that I will not fail in meeting her for this sum and doubt that the blows which I shall present her with will be much more, have no doubt, sorry, that the blows I shall present her with are much more difficult to digest than any which she has given her asses. When the famous ass woman of Stone Newgate, um, of Stone Newgate, Newington. Uh, yeah, so... And once again, using our super accurate talk and fight masks here at the time. So uh, little, by the end of her career, 10 pounds would have been a little more than $2,000 today. So, you know, early in her career, she's fighting for about 800 bucks. So, you know, she's moving in the right direction, still not big money, but, you know, she was getting there. Uh, Elizabeth Wilkinson Stokes, um, you know, is kind of one of, it's one of the most venerated uh female pugilists in early British uh, boxing history. Uh, but, you know, she wasn't by any stretch the first uh, to step into the ring, uh, nor was she, by, of course, by any stretch of the imagination, we, we know, uh, the last uh, to defy gender norms by stepping into the boxing ring. Wow. Thanks, Richard. Yeah. Be amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I, had some, I had some fun researching this one. 